Good morning, everybody. Jay Womack, founder and CEO of Infinity Workforce Solutions. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our webinar will begin in just a few minutes. I appreciate y'all sitting on hold. While we're here waiting for everybody to jump on, I want to give a special shout out to our existing clients that are here with us today. You are proving to your entire workforce that safety is your number one concern, it's your number one priority, and we appreciate that because we are very, very good at delivering training for safety, for orientation, for ongoing corrective action, and you obviously have taken the jump into the company right now and you're using it, you're, you're saying that you're People are valuable to you, and that's exactly what we want. That's what you want, and that's what your people want to hear. So we do have all the answers. We know exactly what we're doing in web-based training. We've been doing this for 15 years, but I have a special offer today for our prospects that show up. We'd like to offer you a 30-day free trial using our system completely. See what it's all about. See if you like using something like this. You know, remote training has jumped to the forefront of the world. In the last 90 days, the world has shifted, it's changed. Remote training, we are the experts. We know more about remote training than virtually anybody in the entire, I guess, world universe. So I want to offer the 30-day free trial. Time offer is limited. Yeah, we can't make this go on forever. I wish we could. I might even throw in a CSR rep, someone who, a client service rep, that can make this thing hum for you, get user activity up on the system, because that's the key, get your people to use the system. I don't care how many bells and whistles you've got, if they're not going to use it, it's not going to have an impact for your company. And at the end of the day, that's what we're all about. We want to see your top line and bottom line improve. We want to see your safety record improve. That's what we do, and we do that better than anybody out there. Thanks for sticking with me. In the meantime, it's what you came for. It's the webinar. So, Mark, if you're ready, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Jay, for a war up. Just to give you a little background, Jay and I go back to the early 90s. Jay's been an unconditional supporter of our industry for, for many, many, many years and has had a tremendous impact on the safety of our highways. And we certainly appreciate everything he's done for our industry. Jay, thank you very much. Uh, brakes. Brakes is the topic for today and brakes need to work. Uh, today, we have a very special panel to discuss the upcoming uh, Brake Safety Week, which is August 23 through 29. My name is Mark Ray, and I'll facilitate this in working with Jay and the Vertical Alliance Group and Infinity Workforce Solutions on providing proper training for our industry. Uh, today we'll cover airlines, push rods, ABS, brake pads, wear and tear, everything that goes together to help a truck stop uh, and how we can validate the brakes are working and in proper order. So let me introduce our guest today. Joining us from on the enforcement side from the Texas Department of Public Safety, we have Major Chris Norlow and from CVSA, the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance, we have Mr. Will Schaefer. So let me tell you a little bit about Major Nordlow. He, uh, he leads the effort uh, for Texas v Commercial Vehicle Enforcement. Uh, Chris has been with the Department of Public Safety since 96 and has worked in El Paso, Falfurious, Houston, Corpus, and is currently stationed at the headquarters in Austin, Texas, where he's responsible for developing policies related to commercial vehicle enforcement and oversees compliance reviews and safety audits. Uh, Major Nordlow maintains close contact with the trucking industry, coordinates enforcement efforts with the FMCSA and serves on the board of directors for the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance. Joining Major Nordlow is Mr. Will Schaefer, Will is responsible for promoting and executing Brake Safety Week next week. Will has 22 years working in the commercial truck bus safety industry. He's currently the director of the vehicle programs for CVSA and is a mechanical engineer by education. So thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to have two career professionals joining us this morning. And I cannot thank you enough for what you both do to support the trucking industry. So to set the tone, let me just, uh, as we know, rear end collisions can be our worst nightmare 
or the plaintiff attorney's dream come true. Uh, these collisions can certainly be minimized through training and awareness and information exchange, which we will detail today. And it's a fact that 12% of the verdicts from rear end collisions are in excess of $1 million. So to put it simply, breaks are important. So we have a lot of information to, to, to cover today, but I wanna ask uh, Major Nordlow and Will a quick question to kick this off. Can you, can you describe with your experience and expertise the benefits of the current collaboration between industry and, and, and enforcement and why that is important? Hey, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'd like to say I appreciate the collaboration that we have uh, with the industry because we can't do this by ourselves. It's not, this isn't something that enforcement can do alone. So our, our collaboration with Infinity Workforce, the Texas Trucking Association, the, Trucking Association the, the Farm Bureau, and countless others, including individual motor carriers that help us with things like our, our local state challenge. Uh, that it improves the relationship that we have and makes us much more effective as a state agency. And we can do this by ourselves. And I've said this before, it's my analogy that, so if you've heard it before, I apologize, but my analogy is that industry and enforcement are on two, dip, sep, two sides of a fence, on opposite sides of a fence, but we're going in the same direction. Our goals are the same. We want uh, safe drivers, safe roads, uh, safe highways, we want to reduce crashes, we all want that. The industry wants that. Enforcement wants that. So next this next week, our inspectors and our troopers at our fixed facilities are going to be focused on level one inspection. Uh, that's to say, undercarriage inspection, including brakes, and uh, that's that'll be our focus for the week. And we do this day in and day out uh, throughout the year. These enforcement campaigns in collaboration with the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance allows us to harmonize that across North America. So it's not just happening in Texas, but Kansas and uh, Alberta are all, also going to be doing the same types of things. So we so. can describe that relationship as healthy. The, the industry enforcement, uh, it's not us versus them. It's, it's we can collectively work together to produce a, a safer environment for the motoring public, for both trucks and cars. Is that a fair statement? Oh, absolutely. And it's been like that for a long time. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, like, like uh, I'd say, when uh, when the Tech Truck Association has an issue with one of their members, uh, they don't avoid it with me. They get it from my attention so we can fix it. Uh, same thing with when we were considering a, a adopting a rule, uh, like when we did uh, ELD for intra state carriers. Uh, I work with them. You know, I'll, I'll show them my ideas, and and they they cut it up and bring me their ideas so that so that when it comes down to administrative rule. Industry has already seen it for the most part. I mean, at least the association has seen it and, and I get support on it. So we, we, we want to make sure it's, uh, that, that our, our carriers are safe and that things are fair for, uh, especially our intrastate carriers. And that's how we do it. We work so that, we're, that, we're that, close. That, that, we, motor motor that, carriers will call and we'll, we'll have a trooper come out and, and demonstrate what a level one inspection looks like. Or we'll talk about changes to laws and regulations and, uh, maybe things that we're seeing, trends that we're seeing uh, in particular types of industry. Uh, that's uh, it's very healthy. So, so I could, I guess you could summarize that as two-way communication going and coming from both sides, and and that's that's a will. Did you want to comment on that on that collaboration, the the, the two-way communication that we see uh, alive and well between industry and enforcement? I would. Uh, I'd echo Major Nordlow's comments about collaboration. Uh, we, we see that. I, I would certainly, I would characterize the trucking industry as a, as not a, um, it, it's not a uh, adversarial relationship with, with the agencies that do weight enforcement. Uh, by and large, uh, they, they understand that we got to keep, you know, we, agencies are checking weights, they're checking safety. And, you know, when inspectors come and approach a, a driver, the driver is typically um, you know, as cordial as, as the officer is to the driver, and, and it, it's a good relationship in that sense. And I'll talk a little more later uh, in the, my presentation about how 
uh, that collaboration is, is echoed throughout the development of this program and our Break Safety Week and how it, how it is executed. It's, it has input from both the enforcement side as well as industry. Very good, very good. Uh, and and I, think, I think our industry certainly appreciates that. So we got a big presentation in front of us. We're gonna get into push rods and chafed airlines and inspections. So if you'll go to the next slide, Will will take over since he is the uh, orchestrating officer for Break Safety Week next week. Thank it's all yours, Will. That's right. And you can step ahead to the next slide. Um, so the Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance, we're a, we're a nonprofit association of the state agencies that do commercial vehicle enforcement. We also have uh, local, local uh, for example, uh, City of Houston or uh, Dallas-Fort Worth police departments can be members and other, others around the country um, as locals. And then we also have, um, those are our uh, enforcement side. And then we also have associate members, which can be anybody else. A motor carrier can join and participate in the, uh, we have two conferences a year. And um, in those conferences, our committees develop the programs and events and activities that support the roadside enforcement program. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. You can see uh, we've got um, uh, 513 um, associate, uh, associate members. We've got 71 class one members. Those are the, uh, the enforcement members. Um, we have 38 local, local jurisdictions. And then we have federal members, which are the agencies um, uh, within the US DOT, um, uh, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the, um, and others. We have Canadian and Mexican representation as well. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. So we've got around 13,000 uh, 13, uh, certified inspectors in North America. Uh, we've got 1,400 fixed facilities um, uh, where uh, weight and, and, and safety inspections take place. And then, and then uh, mobile patrols where uh, officers can conduct, they can set up a location where they might conduct inspections or also just conducting regular traffic enforcement. And then uh, we, we conduct about 4 million roadside inspections annually. Uh, we expect to do between 20 and 30,000 inspections during our break safety week. Uh, maybe let's say 10 to 25 or 10 to 30,000. It just depends on the year. Um, we've had a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of uh, distractions this year, as everyone knows. So we're, we're, uh, we anticipate getting good participation, but uh, we also know that um, departments are, are pulled and put, have other, other uh, priorities that they have to attend to as well this year. So we're, we'll, we, we look forward to having our event uh, starting on uh, Sunday. You can go ahead to the next slide. So some of the tools that we use uh, at Roadside are developed in our CVSA structure, our CVSA, uh, organization. The, net, the North American standard out of service criteria is the handbook by which officers determine whether or not a vehicle is placed out of service. Those regulations are, um, sorry, those criteria are based on the federal regulations or the, uh, the uh, respective Canadian regulations in Canada. They are not regulations in and of themselves, but they are um, the uh, if you comply with all the regulations, you would not find any, you would not be placed out of service in, in any um, other criteria listed in the handbook. Um, it's not a performance or a preventative maintenance standard that I would say that those levels of, of uh, uh, maintenance and, and thresholds of, of performance should be higher than this, you know, it should be a higher threshold than this. This is a pretty low bar to, to meet. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. So the, uh, these are the, in the US, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations is what the out of service criteria are based on for both driver and vehicle requirements. You can go to the next slide. So a little bit about Brake Safety Week, as, as Major, I think Major Nordlow explained it, it's, uh, we've got a week long uh, campaign. Uh, we work with uh, a number of motor carriers, but we also do some enforcement. Uh, we get the word out 
uh, we you know make sure folks are aware that we're going to be doing this. One of the things that we see that we know happens is companies plan to get ready for these breaks, these events that happen a few times a year that we conduct. And you know, in doing that, they're they're checking out their vehicles, and if if they're if they um, you know that in and of itself is is picking up the level of of reliability and maintenance and maintenance. Uh, levels of maintenance on vehicles and, and reducing the likelihood of violations, reducing the likelihood of those rear end crashes or runaway trucks that, that um, can happen without having good brakes. So, so Will, it would be fair to say the timing is right to tweak the, uh, the awareness to both drivers and our maintenance team on doing their pre-trips, basic uh, airline inspections. The timing is right for that. It, it is. Yes. Um, and, and uh, you know, we, we, we also, we learn from, from these events. Um, sometimes there's, you know, you, you're not always going to catch every issue with a vehicle that you have, that you own, that you're running. Um, things, you know, things are wearing out, things get damaged by road debris and that kind of thing can cause a violation that you might get found, that might be found in a, an inspection. A lot of times I, I hear from officers that, you know, drivers are appreciative when they find out that one of their uh, one of their brake drums has been bent or, uh, um, or you know, a, a, a brake lining has, has gotten uh, oil soaked and, uh, and there's a, a wheel, a, you know, wheel seal uh, bearing leaking on it. You know, they, they may not have known that. And that's something that, that can't, be, can't be prevented in every case. Which is certainly consistent with that collaborative effort between industry and enforcement. That's right. And speaking of that collaboration, uh, some of the stories that I hear from our membership, Texas included, is um, that when they do these inspections, uh, one of the things that some motor carrier uh, organizations, uh, trucking associations, motor truck associations from different states, they will reach out to their, their respective agencies. And uh, for example, we, I, I'm aware that in some cases they've had some of their members who are truck drivers and safety operators, safety managers, um, greeting trucks as they come into a, an inspection facility. Um, you know, being as safe as they can, uh, you know, they're, they, uh, they know the business of trucking. So when they greet those drivers, they explain, hey, we're just here to say hi. Um, and we're working with the, the highway patrol or the state police or the Department of Public Safety to conduct these inspections. And it's a, it's a, good, it's a good collaboration that I hear from uh, as that happens in our membership, you can go to the um, you can go to the next slide. Just for some uh, some levity, uh, these aren't all brake violations, but um, you know these are some things that we've uh, photos that have been sent in from inspectors. These are certainly the highly unlikely and very unusual uh, events, but um, uh, you know in the lower left hand corner you see a, a padlock holding that. Uh, brake adjuster to the push rod. Well, it's not compliant with the regulations, and it would be it would be placed in violation. Um, uh, you can go ahead to the next slide. Another illustration. This happened last year, or other, sorry, in 2018, uh, when an inspector went to ask the driver to apply the brakes with the full brake application that they do. One of the chambers exploded, and this is a, a you know a potentially dangerous situation for um, the driver, but you know also the inspector. So you know it it, it is um, it it was again this is a rarity, but uh, illustrates some of the kinds of things that can be found during an inspection. I don't think duct tape would have helped that guy. Nope. So you can go ahead to the next slide. Uh, I've got. A bunch of data here that you know you all can can take a look at after the after the presentation. So I'll go through it relatively quickly. But our our break safety week or our break check day used to be one day, and we expanded to a week long about a, a little more than a decade ago. Um, we've been collecting data uh, since it started in 1998, and for the up until 2015, we looked at S cam drum brake self adjusting brake adjusters. The out, of serve, the out of adjustment rates there. In 2016 to 2018, we took a look at anti-lock braking system violations. These aren't out of service. I wanna 
make sure I highlight that. They are not out of service conditions, but they are violations we were curious about for a few reasons. And we just wanted to get a better picture of what types of ABS violations and how often they were seen during our brake checks. So we have some of that. And then lastly, we're currently looking at brake tubing and hose chafing violations. And you'll see sort of how we do that. We don't have a lot of results on those yet because we just started that last year. But let's go to the next slide. So just comparing for the, uh, for the two decades that we did, um, almost two decades or so, uh, manual versus self-adjusting automatic slack adjusters, the manual adjusters were twice as likely to be out of adjustment in a brake inspection. So that was pretty consistent for many years. I think we've, we've beat that, that horse, <laughs> beat that animal. We, we, know, we know the answer is that these automatic brake adjusters do help reduce the, uh, the rate of, of out of adjustment. However, that doesn't mean you can't have any issues and brakes still do go out of adjustment due to uh, excessive wear in various components of the system. Go ahead to the next slide. Uh, there's two lines on this page. I know the, the numbers are, you know, maybe hard to see and the, and the, the, uh, the lines are a little bit hard to see, but the there's one line that goes from the lower left to the upper right. That's the rising market penetration of self-adjusting brakes. And the blue line is the out of adjustment rate for brakes over those years. So you can see a downward trend of that out of adjustment rate from around uh, 12, almost, you know, 12% and it ended up around 8%, uh, a little bit, maybe eight and a half percent. So, um, uh, of, of vehicles looked, uh, of brakes checked were out of adjustment. So that's, that illustrates again, the, the, uh, the benefit of those automatic brake adjusters over the years. So it's pretty simple though, as, 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 as we, as we continue to see an uptick in self-adjusting brakes, we see a downtick in uh, out of service for brake stroke. It's pretty yep, simple. That's right. And, you know, uh, automatic brake adjusters are, are required since, uh, since the 1990s. So, um, uh, They've been around. So now pretty much every vehicle's got them. Uh, but uh, let's go to the next slide. So uh, I don't have any graphs for this, but we just wanted to look at um, uh, two things. Well, on the left, you just see the out of service rate for brakes in those recent years. Uh, pretty much um, around 20% of vehicles we check have an out of service condition of some kind related to the vehicle. And about half of those out of service violations are typically brake related. In this case, you can see the out of service rate for brake related violations in uh, 2016, 17 and 18 uh, went, you know, it was 13%. There was a little, little bit of a, an anomaly there in 17 with 20%, but by and large, it's around 10 to, 10 to 13 or 10 to 14% of, of vehicles checked of inspections will have a, an out of service brake, brake related violation. Um, then meanwhile, we also looked at the ABS violations and um, you can see that uh, in trucks and tr this is tractors and straight trucks with air brakes, um, we had around 9% on average the, um, of, of trucks were, had a violation on the ABS. And if you look at trailers, all, all air brake, um, around 14%. Um, you know, that, that's not, uh, you know, it's not an indictment of the industry. It's just an, under, an understanding of what we can see in, that, in those ABS. And the importance of anti-lock braking systems is that they improve the, uh, the controllability of the truck in a, in a slippery, in a uh, low mu, we call it, a, a low coefficient of friction surface when, when roads are wet um, or a little bit icy or snowy, uh, not a lot of snow, but the, in those conditions, these help the vehicle stay in control. So we're just help sort of getting an idea about um, ABS violations in this picture. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, so for uh, last year, we started taking a look at, at um, brake hose chafing violations. Um, we did 34,000 inspections for Brake Safety Week 2019. We had around 2,700 chafing 
rubber hose violations and 1,600, 17, almost 1,700 uh, chafing uh, or kinked thermoplastic hoses. That's you know a small data point, but uh, just you know an illustration of kind of the some of the data we collect during the recent event. Go ahead to the next slide. This I wanted to just show you. This is what we offer to our inspectors. Um, this is the the stat the stat sheet that they will tally up as they do inspections. They can count the number of these violations that they see, and it's instructive in a few ways. Um, it shows an illustration of the brake hose and a and a description on the left of the visual characteristics. It's not an out of service condition, but if there's um, if there is wear um, that that goes into the, the reinforcement ply level, uh, that would be a violation. And if it goes into that ply level, that, that uh, reinforcement ply, um, or goes through that reinforcement ply, it would be an out of service condition. And we'll be able to, hopefully after we get the data from this year, we'll be able to see you know, the, 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 how frequently each of those uh, types of violations or conditions are found. And Will, just for clarification, that, that wear is, can, can generally be associated with dangling uh, airlines on the deck plate and, and, the, and the movement of that uh, airline over that deck plate that causes the, uh, which is a very, very easy uh, find and an easy fix. Is that a fair assessment of, of the airline wear and tear? Well, I, yes, I, I will say that, that I'm aware that uh, Hoses uh, rubbing on the on the deck plate are probably a common one. Hoses rubbing together or otherwise not you know not suspended so that they're not in contact with something. Maybe there's some dunnage or or uh, some tools back there. Um, and then also brake lines under the trailer are going to be in the same category. Um, in the data that we collect nationally, we don't know which ones are which. But I, maybe Major Major Nordlow might be able to give an idea about what's most common he sees there. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, yeah, the, these um, these are this is the data that we're going to be collecting for this year, and uh, in addition to just out of the rate of out of service brake violations. So you can go ahead to the next slide. I just have a few more uh, pieces of sort of data related uh, things that we can uh, mention, and then maybe have some discussion. Um, International Road Check is a companion event. It's coming up in September for this year. It's normally scheduled in the spring. And um, we, uh, during that, during the International Road Check, it's not just brakes, it's the whole vehicle and the driver. We do have information about brakes. So I wanted to show, show you what we find there. And I also wanted to mention about both Brake Safety Week and, um, and Road Check. If you're interested to know what your state or, jur or jurisdiction is doing, you can reach out to the lead agency contacts and that link, that uh, URL there uh, is how, where you can find a listing of the lead agency contacts for all North America. Um, just find your state and that, that will list the contact information for the jurisdiction that you're in. But go ahead to the next slide. So again, 2019 break, uh, road check results uh, brakes, braking systems and brake adjustment accounted for around 45% of the out of service violations that we found. So just a, just a quick anecdote there. Um, go ahead to the next slide. This is just a historical um, uh, picture of the vehicle and driver out of service rates for road check. Uh, driver out of service rates go around four to five percent, usually a little under five percent for the past decade and decade plus. And the vehicle out of service rate is a kind of a, uh, a faded gr green or gray line is um, goes from about 28 percent to about 21 or 22 percent over the past couple decades. So just the out of just the vehicle out of service rate. But these are the kinds of things that we can collect uh, during these events. Go ahead to the next slide. So we have a short video here. This is, we have several videos. They're short videos that we inspectors have been using. We, we are generating from inspectors for inspectors to share the kinds of things that they can look for or what they might find. And you can go ahead and play that. This is on plastic hoses.
All right, TSC Hobbs, Maryland State Police Commercial Motor Vehicle Enforcement. So right here, we have air tubing. Has actually been chafed down to the inner color. So once it's down to this inner color, it's gonna be out of service. That's gonna to have to be fixed here on scene before this truck's gonna be able, uh, safe to go down the road. And this is Inspection Bits from Maryland, TSC Hobbs, Maryland State Police. So we're releasing uh, new of the uh, new uh, new videos like that on about a monthly basis, um, uh, and uh, some of them are brake related. Many of them are related to other subjects, but uh, those are those are uh, instruction uh, instructive. And um, uh, if you want more information, check check out our. Uh, they're available to our CVSA membership. I think that these are these particular ones are available on Vimeo. You can find them there. You can go ahead to the next slide. So just, a, just an outline of our different levels of inspection. Uh, during brake safety week, typically we're doing level one inspections, which means we're gonna measure the push rods on the vehicle, on the, uh, on the brakes, on uh, SCAM drum brakes. Uh, they, they, some states do level fours, and that means it's, it's conducting the brake inspection, but not necessarily the, you know, all of the other aspects of the vehicle. Um, but level ones and level fours would have could have brake uh, inspections conducted for next week. Go ahead to the next slide. And, uh, you know, again, these are the categories of vehicle inspection items that uh, have out of service conditions in them. And, you know, brakes is one, but these are the others that, that could be found during, a, during inspection. Um, for next week, depending on the, depending on the, the office or the location, they may be, con you know, conduct. They may be doing level one inspections, and any of these could be subject to inspection. But you know, brakes is the focus, and it's it's uh, just one of those one of those areas. I do have one last slide. Uh, so we have 14 jurisdictions that use roller dynamometer brake testers. So these, uh, you drive the truck on, put the axle on that roller dyno, the machine turns the wheel at a slow speed and the driver applies the brakes and it measures the force that comes out. You do that on all the axles and you can figure out the truck's braking, the overall vehicle's braking efficiency. It has to be 43.5% at a minimum for heavy trucks in the United States per federal regulations. So that's just one thing that those states that listed there plus uh, Alberta and Canada um, uh, use to conduct brake inspections. So that's what I've got for you today, uh, but I know we're going to have some questions and Q&A. Uh, Q well, thank you, Will. Um, nobody wants to have an out-of-service discussion next week with their drivers or an enforcement officer. I think we could all agree on that. And um, uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, we are uh, We do have immediately available content uh, through the through the infinity workforce uh, platform uh, let me to address this and help help prepare your drivers prepare your maintenance team on csa violations pre-trip inspections uh, abs lights the uh, the dangling hose issue that that uh, that you described as well as these uh, videos that you described so uh, thank you very much again, Jay, for offering a 30-day a access pass and a free demo for anybody who's not currently subscribing to our system. Uh, we'll have a, um, uh, and again, we do have immediately available uh, content to, to get out to the uh, drivers this afternoon or tomorrow to help prepare for next week's blitz. Um, and I think we could also agree that the, the training awareness uh, and preparation uh, is, is key to this whole thing. So uh, if you'll go to the next slide, uh, here's some contact information. We have some, some questions that we're going to ask, uh, get through here in just a minute. There's my, com there's my contact if you've got comments, questions, observations. Uh, and again, this this uh, entire presentation will be available 
uh, in just a minute, we'll give you an opportunity to, to click for that. Uh, if you'd like some information, and we're going to answer some Q&A here while, while this poll question is up, contact me about the free demo, uh, Workforce Solutions, yes or no. Contact me about additional resources to help uh, National Break Safety Week, uh, yes or no. Uh, we've got Major Nordlow's uh, contact. We've got Will's contact. We've got myself. We've got a couple of questions I'd like to get out. Let me pull those up. Uh, here's a question, and this is probably for Major Nordlow. Are mechanics who undertake a federal FMCSA inspection trained the same way as an enforcement officer? Uh, likely not. But probably similar. It depends on what type of class you take. In fact, Will might be able to take this one because CVSA has an, an outreach to help uh, safety managers uh, with the process. Will, do you have anything on that? Uh, yeah, you know, um, the, the inspection training or, yeah, the inspector training that CVSA certifies and develops is focused on the, the enforcement officer. Um, the content of that is, it, it is, um, I would say a lot of it is it overlaps with what a what a what a um, mechanic or a technician looking at brakes at a you know DUNT annual inspection does, but they aren't all the same. The the um, information or the the inspector's certification uh, for doing DOT um, I, I, or rather annual or periodic inspections is outlined in the in um, uh, three ninety um, uh, I want to say three ninety three. I might get it wrong here. 396, 19, uh, 19 I, have to, I have to look it up. Um, it's in the federal, in the, uh, in the federal regulations, um, and it, it, in the federal, federal, federal regulation, it defines what training a, a inspector, meaning a mechanic should have, um, and who can, you know, who can work on brakes. It is not exactly the same as what inspectors do for roadside. Okay. I apologize. I think I misunderstood that question. I thought uh, we were talking about mechanics, and I wasn't thinking of the annual inspection. I was thinking about inspections that are done at a motor carrier. So, my my fault. I misunderstood what the question was. Here's another question. Can you ask Major Nordlow? It's a little bit off topic, but we'll ask it anyhow. If if he knows the regulation on headlights, should they be yellow or clear? Yeah, that's defined in, in 393.11, and it says that headlights have to be white or clear. White or clear will get you where you need to be. Uh, we've got a number of requests for uh, the presentation. Uh, I think if you'll, if you, we, you will get a link, uh, if you subscribe, if you, when you signed up, we'll give a follow up link to the presentation of, of all of this information. Uh, let me ask, let me ask a question for Will and Major Nordlow. Um, as, as an industry um, organization, whether an association or a carrier, what can we do to help support the, uh, the efforts next week? Is there anything specific that you could say, yes, we appreciate your involvement or could, could you give us any suggestions on that? I think, uh, you know, if you're interested in finding out what your jurisdiction is doing, reach out, uh, reach out to the state uh, lead agency and just say, hey, you know, we're, we're looking forward to making sure our vehicles are safe on the road and, and um, is there anything we can help you with it? it I, I think that, um, you know, we don't, we don't coordinate that type of interaction between industry and the individual states for the states, the states can do that. But in general, um, you know, just uh, when, you know, greeting the officer and saying, hey, we, we heard we heard this was coming and we're, you know, uh, we appreciate that you're checking out the brake systems. I think that's a that's a very kind gesture that uh, that comes to mind. I would suggest the Texas Trucking Association and the Safety Management Councils uh, that we have across the state are good contacts there. They have, uh, for instance, the, the White House sent us thousands of 
of uh, face masks when all this COVID started hitting and the Texas Truck Association sent their, some of their membership out to our facilities in Divine and Seguin to ha hand out masks to, to truck drivers as they come through. And uh, the, the Houston Safety Council puts together an annual driver appreciation where they come out and they'll, they'll, they'll cook hot dogs and hand out Cokes and it's the drivers who come through and are getting inspected, get fed, they get yeah, shown their appreciation that way. So I would reach out if you're interested into the, to the Texas Truck Association and your local safety management council. Perfect. Yes. And, uh, and we do have some people that will be uh, supporting those efforts next week. So, well, we've, we've covered a lot of ground here. Uh, we've, we've gone over the, the, the dreaded rear end collision and a contributing factor, obviously being brakes that don't work. And, and, and the airlines support those brakes and, and, and the push rod carry and everything that's necessary. So we're looking forward to a great week. Uh, if we have, again, and one of the things that we would like to offer is content that you can get to your drivers, uh, your, your maintenance team uh, this afternoon, tomorrow. Uh, we're standing by to help uh, anybody that's interested in that. Uh, if you would click the poll question if you wanted more information so that uh, you can get those brakes up, up and uh, to snuff. Uh, without anything else, I wanted to again extend my thank you to Major Nordlow and Will Schaefer for all the work you do for our industry and the motoring public. Thank you very much, and we'll be back uh, in a couple of weeks. Thank you.